Hey, Tommy. Okay. Yeah, so I want to see if uh, my um, headset is working. Oh, okay. I'm trying to share my screen here, see if you, if you can see it. Okay. Let's see. Okay, you see the, the PowerPoint? Yeah, yep, looks good. Okay, and then is it uh, full, uh, full screen now? Yes, it is. Okay. Then let's try the other one. Can you see this one? Yep, looks good. Yeah. This one, I'm not sure what to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just kind of give a brief overview. Um, just highlight the the new channelization sidewalks, um, show yeah. walls and tying into the proposed yeah. tie-ins for driveways at least for now. Um, that there's some the driveways are pretty preliminary at this point, but we'll also be working on kind of the final grading, especially on that east side. Yeah, yeah, I think the location of the sidewalk we can tell people that it's approximately where the uh, the open ditch um, are like right now so i think all like all of the the open ditch on the east side is going to be filled in it's kind of give them an idea of where where the new like sidewalk on the east side is going to be yeah okay. sounds good yep it's gonna be really funny if nobody show up. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, we've been kind of preparing like all of this for nothing. Well, we'll just uh, we'll have it recorded and we'll just we'll do the presentation anyways. And just yeah. I think we'll have a couple. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully. I think at some point we might have to do this again uh, for council. Kind of give them an update, just kind of twist, twist the presentation a little bit. Yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah. Yeah, we should have asked uh, Bonnie if anybody had it. Uh, well, yeah, who had signed up. Right. Because she would have had that, huh? Yeah. But well, we'll find out in a minute. Do you know if we do we have this uh, time slot, like just like one hour or something like that? Yeah, six to seven. OK. Yeah, so if, if nobody shows up for a while, we'll just hang out and uh, wait to see if we get anybody and if not i don't know at 6 30 we'll give a presentation that can be recorded and uh and just hang out the rest of the time yeah sounds good Are you coming in tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. We've got a couple of things going on with meetings and stuff, but uh, yeah, cool. I think I should be able to come. Are we supposed to bring some sort of food or anything? Yeah, I think everyone's bring uh, just a dish and uh, so a little gift for like gift exchange. Okay, I'll figure that out. What's everybody yeah. bringing in for food? Uh, I have no idea. I I bought some just uh, chips and some dip. <laughs> so. Okay.
Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Tom Yellen I'm with the city. Um, I'm going to give us a couple minutes more um, in case we have any stragglers before we uh, start with a little presentation. So uh, if you could just hold on for a few minutes, we'll get going. Okay, again, good evening, everyone. Um, don't want to keep people waiting too long with dinner time and all that. So um, I think we'll get started. We've got a short uh, PowerPoint presentation. Kai, do you want to bring that up? Yeah, sure. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right, well, welcome everyone to the 24th Avenue South Improvements Project uh, virtual open house. Um, my name is Tom Yeon. I'm the project manager from, from the city. And Kai, I'll let you introduce yourself as well. Yeah, my name is Kai. I'm the uh, civil ed engineer uh, for the city of Limoges and working on this project as an assistant project ma uh, manager. Thanks, Kai. And then anybody else um, who'd like to introduce yourself who's in the meeting tonight, um, feel free to at this time if you'd like. Uh, no pressure as well. All right. Um, unless anybody would like to, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded. 
uh, we'll make it uh, available at a later date if you'd like to view it again. Next slide, Kai. So a little bit about the uh, 24th Avenue project. Um, so back in 2011, uh, with the help of Highline School District and the Des Moines Police Department, uh, they produced a study to identify um, priority projects with the highest need to enhance safety uh, near the elementary schools within the city. Uh, so this project along 24th was identified as the highest need for all the school, all the projects citywide. Uh, some of the strategic needs for this project um, basically have to do with some of the existing uh, conditions out there. As I'm sure most of you know, uh, it's kind of a narrow roadway. Uh, there's open ditches, uh, especially on the east side with not much shoulder for pedestrians. Um, on the east side, there's really no, little to no pedestrian facilities at all. Uh, so it's important for the safety uh, to get this project going. Um, so the city, in light of that, uh, we applied to the Washington State Transportation Improvement Board, uh, looking for some grant funding for this project. Uh, in 2019, we were selected for a $3.6 million grant uh, to partially fund segment two of the 24th Avenue project. Um, together with our matching funds, that allowed us to um, fully fund this project in its entirety. So on to the project limits. Um, what we're looking to do is do improvements from Kent Des Moines um, all the way up to 223rd. Uh, so that's shown in the red there. We've also identified a section on 224 that we may be um, looking to include in this project. Um, we're, we're kind of still in the preliminary phases of that. Uh, that's kind of more of a stormwater project that we're looking to potentially um, add to this project to realize the scale of economy to save some costs there for some needed stormwater work. So some of the proposed improvements along the 24th corridor in the project, uh, we'd be widening 24th Avenue to include a two-way left turn lane and bike lanes. Um, in addition to that, there'll be curb, gutter, and sidewalk on both sides of the roadway, as well as improving all the ADA, uh, well, currently non-ADA curb ramps, bring them, bringing them up to ADA standards. Uh, the storm system, storm drainage system will be improved throughout the project. I know we've had some issues in the past with some flooding along this corridor, so hopefully this will uh, alleviate some of those concerns. Uh, we'll also be doing some decorative street lighting. Uh, right now, the proposal is to place the street lighting on the east side of 24. And then I don't, hopefully you've noticed uh, throughout the city, we've done some decorative street lighting in other locations, um, mostly the blue poles that you'll see throughout the city. And so we kind of want to mimic that. Um, so uh, it kind of identifies it as kind of the, the city of Des Moines decorative system. Uh, we'll also be enhancing pedestrian crossings near Midway Elementary and Pacific Middle Schools. And we'll, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute here with some graphics we have. Um, the Highland Water District will also be improving some uh, existing facilities within the project limits. Uh, we're working on a partnership with them uh, with an interlocal agreement so they can improve their facilities as part of the project. So as I just mentioned, uh, this graphic is a proposal for the typical section of what you'll find out there when the project's complete. Uh, you'll see we've got curb gutter sidewalk on both sides of the roadway. Uh, we're relocating, or sorry, PSC will be relocating a majority of their uh, aerial facilities to the west side of 24th Avenue. Uh, there will also be a few service poles on the east side uh, that PSC will still need to maintain. Uh, you can see the blue decorative street lighting there as well. Uh, and then behind that street lighting, you also see uh, there's 
we've shown in this graphic some walls. Um, we'll be needing to construct some walls, especially on the east side of the roadway, uh, to basically squeeze all this within the right of way. Um, and then let's see what else we got. We've got bike lanes uh, on the two way left turn lane. That should be helpful. So on to the pedestrian crossings. Um, as you're looking right now, this is the existing condition uh, for the crossing there at the south end of the elementary school. Uh, so this crossing specifically will be improved as well as the crossing, the mid-block crossing just to the north of there. This is a uh, rendering of what that future crosswalk will look like. As you'll see, we'll have overhead um, overhead signage for the crossing. Um, you can see the new sidewalk, ADA curb ramps. And then one other thing that's not shown in this as well is we'll be doing a raised intersection with this location. Uh, that raised intersection will be concrete. And so it'll really highlight the safety aspects of this crossing. We'll also be doing something similar at the mid-block crossing to the north, which is right now in front of the elementary school that goes across to the church. Uh, that will also be basically look exactly the same as this. And it'll also be a raised um, concrete uh, crossing there as well. So right now where the city's at is we are kind of kind of wrapping up the 90% plans on this. And we've identified locations where uh, we'll need to acquire permanent easements and temporary construction easements in order to construct all the improvements within the right of way. So here's a good example. Uh, this picture was taken on 216th, just west of 11th Avenue. Um, and you can see we've got the uh, decorative street lighting and then the wall kind of curves behind uh, that street light. And so you'll see something similar to that on 24th Avenue. And to accomplish this and try and squeeze everything in the right of way, uh, we'll be working with property owners, uh, specifically on the east side of 24th to uh, gain those easements. So the project timeline, uh, we've already completed 30% design. Uh, we're currently working with all the utilities, uh, franchise utilities, to um, sort out a lot of utility conflicts. Uh, this has been a tough project with the, uh, the just sheer number of utilities that are underneath the ground in this corridor and aer aerially as well. Uh, it's, been, it's been a difficult one. Uh, there is, there's a few duct banks, uh, there's water, sewer, storm water. There is, there's a lot of stuff underneath the ground in this corridor that's been uh, difficult to work through. So we are, uh, that is ongoing right now. We're working through it as best as we can. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the 90% design, we are almost wrapped up with that. Uh, we should have that in early January. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll be needing to do right away acquisitions or uh, temporary uh, permanent easements for the right away. And that will start in early 2022 uh, with the goal of construction in the summer of 2022. So on that, I will turn it over to Kai. Uh, we've got a roll plot uh, that will kind of show where we're at with our current design. Right. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, okay. Is my screen, uh, my uh, screen change to the row plot? Yep, looks good. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this uh, row plot right here, ba basically just um, an aerial map with uh, a more detailed layout of uh, the improvement from the 24 project. And let me zoom out here a little bit, kind of showing the um, the project's limit. It's going from uh, Candy Moyes Road to uh, 223rd. Um, and uh, 
um, these are the uh, the rays uh, cr enhance the like crosswalk that Tommy was talking about. Uh, one of it is at the uh, intersection of South uh, 226 and 24. And the other one is, the, is a mid block crossing just uh, north of uh, Midway, the elementary school. And kind of zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, so just want to kind of show uh, the sort of like the cross section that we are proposing for 24 Avenue South with an added uh, two way left turn lane um, with new uh, uh, with bike lane, uh, curb gutter and sidewalk on both sides of the roadway. And the location of the sidewalks on the east side uh, right here is approximately where um, we have uh, open ditches kind of along uh, the east side of 24th Avenue right right now. Just kind of give you a, an idea of where the new sidewalks is going to be located. And these um, kind of bolded uh, black line right here are the proposed location of the the, uh, the retaining wall is going to be um, on the on the east side. Yeah, so any... I'll, yeah. I'll jump on here for a second. Um, we'll be doing a mix of um, basically grading and walls uh, to fit this within the right of way. Uh, what we've run up against is, on, especially on the east side of 24th, there's fairly steep slopes. And so uh, in order to make all that work with these needed improvements, we'll need to do uh, walls and uh, as well as grading. So uh, if you're a property owner, um, especially on the east side of 24th, we'll likely be getting in contact with you. Um, we'll, we'll be out there. Uh, willing to meet with anybody in the field to kind of help help understand where these improvements will be and what kind of what we're looking at moving forward. So as it, again, this is kind of just a, a pretty preliminary uh, look at, especially at the driveways uh, along the east side of this corridor. So uh, yeah. Yeah, um, with that, I think we would like to open up for any um, questions uh, that uh, you might have. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Hans Pond. I'm a board member at Grace Lutheran Church. And um, currently there is some street parking on the uh, west side of 24th Avenue. Uh, just to the east of uh, the church parking lot. Uh, will that uh, street parking uh, be eliminated? Yes, that will be eliminated as part of the project. Um, in order to facilitate the widening of 24, uh, the bike lanes and the sidewalk there, uh, we'll need to remove that parking. Um, will any of the new... Uh, right of ways affect uh, the parking lot of the church? Um, Kai, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't believe it will. Um, looking at the roll plot here, and from what, I've, what I'm familiar with, I, I don't see any impacts there. Um, I do know there's a row of trees there uh, between the parking lot and 24th Avenue. And as part of uh, PSE's relocation of their aerial facilities, I know those trees could be impacted, uh, but that's really um, up to PSE. And um, I'm I'm guessing that they'll be reaching out to you in the future to discuss that. Um, the the one of our concerns is there are two uh, driveways entering the uh, church parking lot. 
and they're already uh, fairly steep. Um, if the um, if the road is widened at those points, um, will there be some mitigation of the the steepness of those driveways? Yeah, understood. Um, I don't specifically know how those driveways will look with the project. Um, what I will do though is I will uh, jot that down and I'll work with our design engineer to take a close look at those driveways. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. My name's Shannon. I have a couple of questions as well. Yeah, please uh, go ahead. We live in the neighborhood across Kent Des Moines from here. And um, so one of my questions is, I know this starts at 24th at Kent Des Moines Road, but is there any thought to pedestrian improvement for the students who have to cross Kent Des Moines Road to go to the middle school, for example, who are walking? Uh, I don't know if there's any plan to address that intersection more broadly. And then my second question, which this may or may not be the appropriate forum, but it's frustrating when I see full-size semi-trucks traveling down this stretch of road instead of catching it at 216th. And I don't think they belong here because this is a neighborhood. So I don't know if there's a way to sign this stretch so that they semi stay out of it. They don't belong here. Yeah, under, understood on the semis. Um, I'll take a look into that. Um, that. That may be something that we can look into. Um, that would be great. Yeah, I, I know we've had some issues, uh, some similar issues like that before. So I will, uh, again, I'll make another note on that. Look into it. And then as to your question there on Kent Moine Road. So these improvements will address the curb ramps on the north side of Kent Moine Road. Okay. Um, we, aren't, we aren't doing any improvements on the south side. Um, one of the main reasons for that is uh, future plans for Kent Moine Road uh, show some significant improvements as part of a separate project. Okay. In that intersection, and at that point, that's when we want to uh, do improvements. We don't want to do any improvements on the south side that may have to be um, rebuilt um, just years down the road. That's actually very encouraging because that's another problem spot is Kent Des Moines between Highway 99 and this intersection. So it's it's nice to hear you guys already have that on your radar as well. Yeah, it's it's out there in our uh, uh, TIP projects. Um, I will say that is a bit of a difficult stretch because there's a portion of Kent Des Moines Road that if I'm remembering right, it's like half in Des Moines and half in Kent. So there's definitely some partnerships that um, need to be worked through on that one. Okay. Overall, I, I'm very excited about this. I think this is gonna be a huge improvement. So I'm really glad you guys are doing it. Yeah, it'll look significantly different out there and uh, we're, we're excited as well. And how long do you anticipate the construction will take start to finish once you start next summer? Uh, we don't, we're not quite sure on that yet. Um, okay. Once we get through kind of the 90% the and to the 100% plans, we'll have a better idea of that. Also, okay. we're still working with some of the utilities, uh, trying to work on partnerships for the construction. So there could be some additional um, construction with those utilities that may uh, extend the project um, longer than we're anticipating right now. So that's that's kind of a tough question to answer. But it is, it, I, I can say that honestly, it, it will take, uh, it will take a bit and there is the potential that some of the final improvements such as paving could run into 2023. Okay. We're hopeful to try and get everything, the goal is to try and get everything done this summer, but we'll have to see how that turns out. Sounds good, thank you. Hi, uh, can you hear me? My name is Amanda. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, my husband and I uh, live on 24th Avenue South. We're, we're watching right now and we see our house looks like it's probably definitely one of the ones affected. If we've got, there's a, a blue line right up our driveway that we're looking at right now. Um, can we uh, assume, I mean, we, we only found out about this 
because of the flyer in the mail, would will that be the same way that someone may or may not reach out to us um, about the acquisitions going forward, or how would they get in touch with us? Um, just curious. Yeah. So what I would say is um, probably the, the best way and easiest way would be to shoot myself uh, an email, and okay. we can coordinate. Um, probably a lot easier to do that. Okay, because yeah, it looks, uh, yeah, we're looking at our house right now. There's a big blue line up the driveway. So we're, we're assuming that, you know, maybe some part of it or whatever, but absolutely, well, I'll do that after the meetings and meeting and, and give you our uh, address and, and information. So to make that maybe a little bit easier when the time comes. Sounds yeah, good. And, okay. yeah, and uh, yeah, I just want to kind of add on that a little bit. I think uh, Tommy's already mentioned as part of the presentation as well that we willing to uh, have a meeting with you out there and kind of just lay laid it out you know where the uh, the proposed improvement is going to be um, yeah, relatively to uh, the existing like addition uh, of your uh, play frontage um, okay yeah all right thank you I'll do that awesome Uh, can you share with us your email contact information that we might, uh, uh, if we have questions later on, that we can address them directly to you, please? Yeah, sure. Um, Kyle, bring that up on here. Um, and also be sure to always check the uh, website where you were able to access this meeting. It has our contact information on it as well. Okay, very good. Yeah, we'll, and we'll try and keep that updated throughout the project as well. So if you ever have any questions or kind of looking to see kind of where the project is currently at, uh, it's a good place to take a look. Oh, I see it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I have the, uh, um, yeah, Tom, both Tommy and myself, uh, contact information here. So I believe that's all um, we have to present, but uh, I will be hanging out here till uh, seven o'clock. So if you have any further questions or anything you'd like us to uh, go back and show again, uh, feel free to. Thank you both very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Tommy. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, the retaining wall, is it going to be the same material, the same basic look as 216? Well, let's see, can I go back to that slide there? Yeah, let me try to. Oh. Yeah, so I think it'll be, it'll look a little different. Um, I believe there's a little bit of a space that's going to be between the sidewalk and the wall. Um, that's been, we've kind of had that up in the air. I'm not sure where that's landed recently, Kai, maybe you can. Uh, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, the, the, um, the wall is, it's going to be um, like a few inches. Uh, there's a, going to be a, a few inches gap between the back of the sidewalk and the wall. But in in regard to the, des the design and how the wall is going to look, um, it's going to look sim similar to what we have uh, along the 216. We have uh, good um, success uh, using that type of uh, the retaining wall on previous project on the city. So we 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 wanted to continue to use that same uh, specification uh, for this project. Yeah, I've, I've seen it in several places. It just yeah. Um, the the other thing, um, if um, this is going to provide improvements to the flooding, right? I assume there's going to be more capacity for stormwater. Um, where does that? Where's the outfall for that? Um, where does it head towards? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, so there's a couple different drainages um, on this project. Um, Kai, maybe we can go back to the roll plot. Yeah. 
Okay. So I know the, the drainage in uh, the area that's shown right now, uh, that mostly goes down to Kent Des Moines. Um, everywhere north of 227 is going to be in a main trunk line that runs uh, it'll run on the east side of 24 and then there's an existing yeah i think it's i think it's somewhere here that's a uh, uh, further south at 227 there's an existing crossing that was put in years ago that will connect into and so that trunk line runs across 24 and eventually makes its way down into the drainage again along Kendamon Road. And then on the very north end of the project, uh, that drainage runs down, I believe it is, yeah, it runs down to 23rd. Um, so this may seem a little out there, but does any of that have any impact on any active streams in the area? Um, I'd have to get back to yeah. you on, um, we've, so what we've done is we did a, uh, TIR, which looks at the drainage. And so our stormwater department took a look at that and they were comfortable with, uh, the plants here. Uh, the, these stormwater improvements have also been identified in this, uh, comprehensive stormwater plan. And so we're just, uh, we're just implementing those projects as a part of our project. Okay. Yeah. The, you, okay. And Tommy, I believe um, this uh, open house is recorded and uh, I think Bonnie uh, will have a link somewhere that people can have access to. You're reading my mind. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Yeah, so if, if anybody has any more questions, again, feel free to ask. Um, as Kai mentioned, we'll have the, the full virtual meeting um, uploaded for anybody to watch later that may have missed tonight's meeting. Uh, excuse me, uh, sorry, I missed the first part of the meeting, but has there been any indication from the Highline School District as to ingress and, and uh, egress uh, uh, that is gonna be required for the rebuilt Pacific Middle School? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I've I've been working with um, a couple of representatives from the school district uh, for the last couple of years now. Um, I know that they proposed basically a full rebuild of Pacific Middle School. Maybe Kai go a little south on your roll plot there. Um, and so they are doing, as far as my understanding, there's going to be. Um, some substantial layout changes, um, especially of their parking lot. And I was hoping to work on a partnership with the school district to um, make any, well, to try and incorporate some of those layout changes with the project. But my understanding is their project there at Pacific Middle School has kind of been put on hold or they're kind of in delay. And so at this time, they're just not at the point where they could partner with us um, for some of their on-site improvements. So we've kind of had to just push forward with our project. Um, so what we're, what we're showing now is just basically tying into the existing driveways. And when the school does redevelop in the future, uh, they would be required to um, um, adjust the sidewalk and the driveways to fit with their revised layout. 
So their their plans are not advanced enough to this point that that uh, they have any idea what they're going to do at the site. I think they do, but um, we wouldn't be able to incorporate their driveway locations um, in have kind of interim use with their existing layout. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, I do have another question, and I'm sorry, I, you may have answered this in the initial uh, uh, presentation, but uh, there is the, the utilities in this place, in this case, the electrical utilities will be above ground. They're not going to be uh, buried. Correct. Yeah, as a part of this project, um, the utilities will stay aerial. Um, PSE has proposed moving um, most of their facilities onto the west side of 24th Avenue. There will still be some service poles on the east side, uh, especially for a lot of the homes. Um, but yes, that, that is correct. Um, the um, undergrounding, um, that cost would have been borne by the city. And at this time, we just don't have the budget to take that on. And that's, you know, I'll, I'll add on to that as well. Um, so this project is funded primarily with transportation improvement board funds. They were awarded as part of a $3.6 million grant. And so TIB um, matches our funding for improvements such as sidewalk um, and pedestrian improvements, uh, which also goes for the roadway itself. Um, but TIB does not recognize um, matching funds for undergrounding of utilities. So that cost, uh, instead of a, a share with TIB, uh, would be it would need to be fully funded by the city. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Is there ever going to is there going to be any um, 24th Avenue improvement from 223rd to 216th or is it going to just be to 213th? I mean 223rd. Yeah, so this project um, is kind of a naming thing. This was this project itself from 223rd to Kent Des Moines Road was um, was named as the segment two of the 24th Avenue corridor. Segment one is from, as you mentioned, uh, 223rd to 216. And we have identified a project there um, for improvements in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Since we're here in a lull, I'll ask another question is, uh, and again, I may have missed the, the original explanation is, but uh, will there be any improvements to the left turn signal uh, uh, coming off of Kent Des Moines Road onto 24th? I've, uh, several residents have uh, screamed literally the, the uh, you know, we need a, we need a left turn signal at, at uh, uh, 24th and, and uh, Ken Des Moines Road. Yeah, so hopefully Kai you can bring that up.
Yeah, so as part of the project, we'll be adding a left turn pocket there with associated improvements to the signal to provide a uh, left turn at that intersection. And this is this is left turn off of Kent Moyne Road uh, eastbound onto yeah. 24th. Eastbound. Um, this project will provide a for a left turn pocket going southbound on 24th uh, and then eastbound on the Kent Moyne Road. To eastbound on Kent Moyne Road, but I, I'm referring to the other quadrant. Uh, coming uh, coming east on on Kent Moyne Road to 24th, and then having a dedicated left turn signal to then proceed on to 24th. Whereas right now, it's like wait for endless traffic to possibly break, and sometimes through a, a cycle, there's only one vehicle that's able to get through. I think yeah, I think I understand now. So there's. There's not a protected left turn at uh, Kent Des Moines Road onto northbound 24. Um, yeah, that's something I can uh, we can take a look into to see if that is warranted. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'll just, I'll just mention again, since we're, we're all just hanging out together on this uh, Wednesday evening, um, feel free to ask any other questions or um, we'll, we'll throw it up there again, but uh, my email and Kai's email, um, always, uh, if you have any questions going forward on the project, feel free to shoot us an email at any time. Is there any concern with the, the right of ways needed with the residences? Is there any concern that that could throw a monkey wrench in the project if somebody doesn't agree? Yeah, that that is always a concern that we have. Um, and all, all we can do is work through it um, the best that we can. Um, we'll be working with a right of way consultant um, for some of those negotiations. So it, like I said, it, it is always um, a risk to the project schedule, but we hope that uh, with the right of way that's needed, that hopefully we can work through that, those acquisitions uh, as soon as possible to get the project going this summer. Um, most of these easements are fairly minor. Um, I think the the temporary construction easements, uh, those will extend uh, a bit further to the east. And I think you can kind of see in that dashed line uh, where some of the typical uh, temporary easements may be. Uh, for the permanent easements for the walls, those are 
fairly um, fairly small. Uh, we're only looking at needing a couple of feet. So hopefully those negotiations will um, go smoothly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to kind of add um, on to what Tom we just said a little bit, uh, trying to uh, clarify that a little bit. Uh, the dashed line is uh, that Tommy mentioned for the temporary construction easement is this uh, black line like right here. And um, the dashed blue line that you, you guys can see right here is the existing uh, right of way line. And as you can uh, as you can see, you know, for um, for the area, for example, um, uh, let me just kind of use um, uh, this property like right here. Um, you know, for the for the most part, we be able to fit the retaining wall uh, within the right of way, but for the area that is require uh, a decorative street light the found, the foundation. Uh, we have decided to create uh, a bump out in the retaining wall to create more room for uh, the decorative like, street light instead of having that street light uh, sit kind of in like within the sidewalk. Um, so that additional room for that street light would require a permanent um, easement for it. Hence that little area. Um, outside of the right of way line there. Yeah, we've done our best to try to incorporate all the improvements within the right of way, um, but especially with the grading on the east side of 24th, it's, it's made it quite difficult. So um, we'd, we'd love to always be able to construct everything within the right of way and not have to go um, get any sort of uh, permanent easements, but in this case, we we've just ran into um, it's just kind of it is what it is, and that's um, that's what we kind of run up against is we we need to gain or get some of those uh, permanent easements in order to construct the sidewalk. Thanks. I assume the, um, so right now they've got those flashing lights that say when school's in session and the speed limit changes, I assume that's being retained as part of this process? Yes, it will. Um, we'll need to relocate that, um, obviously, to incorporate that with the sidewalk. But yes, the, uh, the flashing beacons and the cameras will, um, will be retained as part of this project. Thanks. I need to sign off, but again, I really appreciate your, your time and thanks for putting this together. Yeah, no problem. Um, we appreciate your attendance and uh, we'll hopefully get this project uh, constructed this summer. Excellent. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, feel, feel free to let me know if you guys would like me to uh, um, kind of pan to a different area or zoom into a specific uh, location as well. Uh, these slides that you've uh, shown us tonight, are they available uh, 
on the website or uh, in a hard copy in some manner? Um, on the project website, um, that kind of covers everything in the slides, but I'll see if we can add the, uh, the presentation to the project website as well. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is uh, share some of those with uh, the other board members so that they uh, can have a visual, uh, a better visual of what they can expect. Okay, that sounds great. Tommy, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry you're not getting paid by the hour, by the way. Um, um, so uh, could you explain for, you know, the, those remaining, um, the uh, strategy in moving the uh, various poles to the west side and why, you know, some service poles remain on the east? Yeah, so... I guess I'll have to go back a little in history on this one. So um, currently, obviously, there's poles on both sides of the roadway there. Um, we, in preliminary conversations with PSC, uh, we, we basically went to PSC and said, hey, here's, here's the city's improvements. And the existing poles are in the way of the proposed sidewalk. So PSE took a look at our plans and it was really up to them. Um, they, they were the ones who decided on relocating their facilities to the west side of the roadway. Um, that was, I think that was great news for us uh, because it allowed us to consolidate all the street lighting to one side for a consistent corridor um, and something that's gonna look, um, what we were going for is trying to look better than um, maybe something on like 16th. Um, 16th, you've kind of got a mix of uh, aerial facilities on I believe both sides of the roadway there uh, and with uh, lighting attached to the uh, PSE poles. So um, it was really, it was really PSE's decision to go to the west side of the roadway there. Um, and so that's kind of how we ended up there. Uh, the problem with the service poles is they're still needed to uh, connect to those houses on the east side of 24. So it's really P up to PSE's design. Uh, what we told them is we, there's not room for their facilities then within the right of way on the east side of 24. So any poles on that east side that are service poles, those will be actually on private property. And PSE will need to work with property owners to acquire any easements that they may need to put those poles over there. Does this create any? Uh, I'm just blue skying here. Any um, you know future challenges for like Comcast or the 5G networks on the east side of the that neighborhood? Right, so we've, we've coordinated with all our franchise uh, utilities, which includes um, the other providers. And so what we've found is they are working with PSE to attach their facilities onto PSE's new uh, line through the corridor. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you.
Any more good questions? We've got about five minutes left. All right, one last call for any questions anybody may have. All right, well, um, that wraps up tonight's virtual meeting for the 24th Avenue Improvements Project. Uh, I just want to th say thank you to everybody for your attendance. And we look forward to working with you. And again, if you have any questions as the project moves forward, Please feel free to shoot Kyer and I email. Uh, our phone numbers are there also. Uh, so feel free to contact us anytime you'd like. Thanks for your time, fellas. Uh, thank you. Thank you.